the railways is now subsumed within the general budget and sometimes many of the innovative things, the new proposals, the extension of uh, lines does not get captured fully in the headlines which get dominated by the overall uh, government's balance sheet. Uh, Ashwini ji, there's been a record allocation and this is, continues with the trend since 2014. Uh, as you talk about the allocations, could you also give us some sense about the achievements on the ground? Because while there are visible changes that we see in the stations and those who do travel by trains last two years haven't been very good for that as well. Uh, but what about the substantial infrastructure, the rolling stock, uh, the track and the augmentation for all those targets? Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, the record budget allocation for railways, 1,37,000 crore for capital investment. I think that's a great, great, great thing. I thank Honorable Prime Minister for that. Railways has been starved of uh, investment for many decades. The trend started changing in 2014, 15, 16, that time frame. Capital investment started increasing. And see, why capital investment in railways is so important? There is, a, of course, one major part, which is passenger experience, because we carry close to 8.5 billion passenger trips every year. For the country, the cost of logistics, if we have to bring it down, if we have to make sure that our transportation is green, then the modal share of railways has to increase from its current 27, 26 percentage points to close to 40, 45 percent points. Because if there is a total railway economy, let's say, then the cost of logistics will be 5, 6 percent. If there is a total road economy, the cost of logistics will be 17, 18, 19 percent range. The cost for the country is always a weighted average of this. So we are at 13, 14 percent. If you have to bring it down, see, we are 232 lakh crore economy GDP today. Even one percentage point reduction in cost of logistics means the country saves 2 lakh 32,000 crore. So that is the real reason why we need to bring down the cost of logistics and we have to step up investment in Indian railways. Uh, Mr. Vaishnav, one of the points that we see is the continuing focus by the government's uh, spending from the budget. But when we also look at some of the uh, newer steps that you have yourself have envisaged in the railways, the word that one doesn't get to hear often is private sector involvement. Or even if one does, it is, if I may use those words, sometimes amounting only to lip service. Okay, so two parts of your question. First is uh, uh, the focus on capital investment and second is the private sector involvement in Indian railways. Look, railways is a very, very complex system. There are some countries where railway is limited to cargo transportation like the US, like the Canada, like uh, parts of uh, South America, Argentina, Brazil, these countries which are very good at uh, uh, mineral transportation. Rest of the world, entire Europe, Southeast Asia, Japan, China, India, rest of this world is basically carrying passenger as well as cargo. Whenever this complexity comes, all these countries have government as the predominant player in India, in railway sector. Um, I can sit with you and explain how, it, how complex it is. See, a road is basically a road, right? Railway is the road, plus the track, plus the electrification, plus the signaling, plus the station, plus the train which has to run on it. You cannot have one Hyundai and one Suzuki running in parallel. You can, nobody can just join it, right? It's very, very complex. That's the reason why government has to play the dominant role and that's the reason why we are also, there is absolutely no question of railway privatization. 